Welcome back to the lab, your place for tutorials, travel and inspiration. Today I will show you everything about camera tracking you need to know and how to place motion graphics or animations in your scene so that sticks at the right point. For this shot I took my camera on my gimbal and I just walked towards this car and this is the shot that we are using for this example. So my timeline looks like this, I've just placed some animations to the length I wanted to have and later we're gonna combine this with the camera tracker. Then when you're happy with that, select all of them, create a new fusion clip and jump right into fusion. In the fusion, delete the merge nodes and the background node. Now click on this left little dot here so you can see which clip it is. So this is just the raw clip of my Clio, so I place it down here. Next one is here the information board. I place it somewhere around here. Now when I select the media 2, you can see nothing is visible. You can see this is this clip here. So it ends right here at this point and in the fusion clip it will end at this point. This is why we position them to the length we want to have. So we've got here the clip from my Clio. We connect it to the media out and these up here are all the animations. So first we need to do the camera tracking. So we select the media in one, the Clio clip hit shift and spacebar and type in camera tracker press enter so the camera tracker could be really confusing at first but i will explain it as simple as possible put the detection threshold to around 2.4 so you've got a better tracking result minimum feature separation is how many tracker points you've got in your image i put it to 0.02 it will take a lot longer to render but we've got a lot more tracking points so we have the better result when we place our animations then bi-directional tracking enable it so it tracks back and forth the whole clip and preview auto track location and then click on auto track now you see we've got a lot a lot of tracking points here and we need that so we have a good result at the end just track it back and forth then go over here to camera Vocal length, I've used a 60 millimeter, so I type that in. Then here on solve, leave all the settings like that and click on solve. Now DaVinci analyzes all the tracking points and will solve the good tracking points. Maybe we need to delete some of them, but I think it should work very good because it's a smooth motion. And this is where the sponsor of this video comes in, Motion VFX. I've put a link down in the description below where you come directly to the Motion VFX site with some huge discounts. Then make sure to select DaVinci Resolve and you can see here they got a lot of different packages. And let's say for example here this workspace package is something for me so I click on it. Then you can see up here you have the trailer so what it's in this package and then you've got here some tutorials how to install it and how to use it and when you scroll further down you've got many details to it and you've got previews for everything they have so for example here background then hover over it and you see exactly what it is so these are the backgrounds included then here curved screens hover over and you see what's inside then you've got some effects you can put over it or some intros for your youtube tutorials or shorts or whatever you use it or you have some simple animations like this one and this is what i really like about it you can just install it drag and drop it and adjust the sliders and you see this is only one package so there's a lot inside it so let's say you like this package so you buy it and once you've bought it you can go here to the m installer and just install it for mac or windows and here on the M installer, you can see these are all my package I've downloaded. And by just clicking here, it's already installed in my DaVinci Resolve. So I think you got the hang of it. So if you like it and you want to have access to all the discounts, make sure to check out the link down in the description and elevate your animations to the next level. So back to DaVinci, once your solving is finished, it should look like that. Over here, you've got average solve error is at 0.25 pixels. That's perfect everything below one is good if your number here is over one go down here maximum track error and just decrease this number slightly not too much to around 0.148 or something like that then delete and solve it again when you're below one go over here to export click on the drop down here on 3d scene transformation click on unaligned now we select the area we want to place our animation 
And in my example, it worked the best as I took here the wheel. I just select this area here, click on set from selection and aligned. Now everything changes to this position. So all the animations we put into the scene, it sticks to this position. And from there on, we can adjust it where we want to have. Then click up here on export. And now you've got a node tree like that. A lot of informations. Take here the camera tracker and with holding down shift, you can place it down here. Point cloud, you can delete that. We don't need that. And the ground plane, we also don't need that. Then disconnect it from the media out and plug it into the media out. So we have a straight line like that. And now we just need to plug in our animations into the merge 3D. And by doing that, you see this doesn't work. This is because here we are in the 3D scene and these animations are in the 2D scene. So we need to tell DaVinci we want to have this animation in the 3D scene. And we can do it by taking here an image plane 3D then we plug this animation into the image plane and in the merge 3D. For better explanation, I put here the merge 3D into the left viewer, so over here. This is the overview of our 3D scene. You can see we have here the camera and the green line is the movement of the camera. So you can see this is the movement right here. Here on the right viewer, you can see the motion graphic in the scene, but it sticks way too far in the distance so it doesn't stick where we want it to have now. So for that select here the image plane and here on the left viewer you see you've got these colored arrows and now we just take it closer here to the camera. Right here on the inspector we can make it smaller and now we just position it where we want to have. So when we go through the timeline, you can see now it really sticks in front here of the car. So this is pretty rough the position we want to have. And now you can just play around here with the settings and the adjustments until you're happy with the positioning of this motion graphic. When you're happy with the first one, take this image plane, Ctrl or Command C, Ctrl or Command V to copy it over and do this for every motion graphic you have. Connect all of them together. And now I recommend to do one by one. So take this one, connect it to the Merge 3D, select the image plane, and now do the same thing again. You can position it with these arrows, maybe give a bit of a rotation, more like that. So play around here with the settings and then go through the timeline and check if it's positioned right where you want it to have. And like that, you can position every single one where you want it to have. So when you've positioned everything, your fusion should look something like that. You've got all the animations with the image plane 3D plugged into the merge 3D and render it out to the media out. And we go through the timeline, you can see all the little details in the animation, how it appears and how it disappears here with the height and everything. And this is why we position it earlier in the edit page when we want the animation to start and to end. So here in Diffusion, it's just 3D tracking and positioning. And this final result is the reason why I did this with Motion VFX. Once again, huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. To do all this animation by myself would, would take hours. And this was just a decision from myself to do it with this plugin because it looks so amazing. I really love it. So once again, make sure to check out the link down in the description. You go directly to their site with all the discounts. And with that said, have fun creating and see you in the next one.